Our second speaker, Nate Stewart, is the Chief Product Officer at Cockroach Labs and was recently elected to their Board of Directors. He previously led product teams at Percolate, a marketing SaaS company that was acquired by Seismic, and was a PM at Microsoft, where he was part of their team during their transition to the Cloud First strategy. For those of you who joined us at the New York Product Conference three years ago, you'll remember hearing about Nate's evaluation of the strategy and opportunity at Cockroach. We are excited to have him back now to share how he was driven, has driven that strategic change, all while going head on against the most formidable technology companies ever. Hi, I'm Nate Stewart, Chief Product Officer at Cockroach Labs. And in this session, we're going to cover a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and that's product strategy. But rather than talk about how to build a product strategy or how to build a competitive advantage, I want to talk about some of the organizational forces that make strategy difficult to pull off in the real world. Over the next 20 minutes, we'll cover three things. First is some background on Cockroach Labs and the environment in which we're operating. The second is the meat of the presentation. That's where we'll cover two case studies that talked about big decisions that I had to make as a product leader, but also some of the factors and some of the forces that threatened forward progress. And then lastly, I'll wrap up with some lessons learned, and then we can move into a question and answer session. So for some background, Cockroach Labs makes a database called CockroachDB. It was built from the ground up to help developers make applications and services that are extremely scalable, extremely low latency, but also indestructible. And that's really where the, the name comes from. We've helped some of the largest and fastest growing companies in the world modernize their application stacks from DoorDash to eBay to SpaceX. Along the way, we've raised nearly $200 million in venture funding. I joined Cockroach Labs in 2017, and I was responsible for putting in place the people, the processes, and most importantly for this talk, the product strategy to help us go head to head against the major cloud providers that had nearly unlimited resources as we competed to win the hearts and minds of developers. And along the way, I had to make a handful of decisions that would fundamentally alter the course of Cockroach Labs. And I wanna share some of the things I learned in making those trade-offs and in lobbying the company to rally around these new decisions. That leads me to a quote from Andy Grove from his book, Only the Paranoid Survive. And that quote says, in times of change, managers almost always know which direction they should go in, but they usually act too late and do too little. And to talk about how this played out at Cockroach Labs, I wanna talk about two stories. The first is all about using legal protections to dig a moat and to build in protections against trillion dollar cloud providers while also fundamentally changing the relationship with the developers that are so important to our business. The second story is all about changing how we package and deliver CockroachDB in order to give developers our product in a form factor and through a channel that they prefer. In each one of these stories, you're going to see a major market change, the strategic decision we made, and most importantly, why that decision was hard. What were the factors and what were the forces in our organization and in our market that threaten to slow our progress? And that's really where I'm going to focus on for each one of these stories. So first, digging them out. CockroachDB is an open source product. What that means is any developer can look at the, the source code for CockroachDB. They can understand how it works under the hood. And not only can they file bugs or file feature requests, they can actually change the product itself in order to better serve their needs. This collaborative form of software development has really defined a lot of the fundamental technologies of the internet. But in addition to being a point of view and a philosophy that software should be open and free, it's also a very powerful go-to-market because what this means is developers can download the product for free, they can try it, they can deploy it widely in their organization, and they only need to pay us when they need some enterprise features which are under a different license. And if you think about it, that is very much an early version of what's now called product-led growth. Right, so open source is a mindset, but it's also a go-to-market motion. This is how some of the most popular and successful technologies rose to prominence, from Elasticsearch to MongoDB to Cassandra to MySQL. They all took this bottom-up open source 
approach to now, in the case of Mongo and Elastic, being publicly traded companies. There was a great playbook for doing this, and that was a playbook that Cockroach Labs wanted to follow. But there was a change. There was a change in the market. There was a change in how open source companies could ultimately chart that path to success. Because Jeff Bezos and Amazon, they had different plans. They realized that, hey, there's all this free software around. They don't have to pay for it. Meanwhile, they have a, a collection or a huge pool of developers and they already have an ecosystem in which they're operating. They can just take these open source projects offer them as managed services and reap all of the profits and reap all of the benefits without giving any revenue back to the original authors. This was an existential threat to the open source business model. And companies like Cockroach Labs were scrambling to figure out how do we compete against Amazon? How do we still stay true to our open values and our relationship with our developers while also building a business to last? And so that led me to a major strategic decision. The first option was to do nothing. We're starting to get great traction with developers. They love our licensing model. We're already seeing a lot of uh, contributions that are making the, the product much better and uh, much more usable. That was the first option. The second option was to move to another license that would not be quite as open and that would put some restrictions on how you could use uh, CockroachDB and ultimately create a carve out that prevented cloud providers from using our product without paying us. I'm not going to spend time focusing on why we made the decision to change course. Instead, I want to focus on what threatened timely action because people often say strategy is nothing without execution. But what's important is that there's a, this middle step between strategy and execution and that's the decision to proceed. That is the decision to take action. And let's talk about why that was hard. The biggest threat to timely action here was around community expectations. We were just starting to see great adoption among the, our developer community. We were just starting to see a lot of revenue growth from these larger enterprises that were making big and strategic bets on Cockroach Labs. And we didn't know what would happen if we changed that license because that was fundamentally changing a contract that we had built with our customers and our community over the last several years. And so in order to push forward, I treated this big decision or this change management process the same way that I would treat a feature or uh, developing a new product. I understood the, the core problem that we were trying to solve and I figured out different ways that we could manage the risk until we got to a point where we were comfortable as an organization to move forward. So that meant creating a common understanding of the challenges facing our business with our most strategic customers, talking to a cross section of our community from the enterprise side to the commercial side to the growth stage, stage side to say, hey, do we agree that there is a fundamental threat to our business with Amazon? And it is our responsibility to change our license or to build in more product protections in order to keep investing in our business and keep building the, the products that have become so important to your organization. Across the board, people understood that Amazon had changed the game here and we were compelled to act. The next thing was all about understanding what did open source mean to them, right? Did they like open source for open source sake, really thinking about what it meant for software to be free and open and that's really what was driving adoption and love of CockroachDB? Or was it something more practical? They liked the protections that the open source license gave them. And might we find another way to accomplish the same thing with a license that wasn't quite as open? And so after talking to this cross section of our, our customers, it became pretty clear that people wanted to be able to use the product for free and deploy it widely in their organizations. We could do that with a different license. They wanted the ability to look at the code. They didn't want the code to be closed in any way. That was fine. We could do that with a different license. And lastly, they wanted to retain the ability to contribute back to the core product and make changes on the feature side or on the bug side. And again, we could do that with another license. So ultimately, that let us know that we could create another license that wasn't traditionally open, but also gave us the protections against Amazon. That was a huge win and that built a lot of confidence for us as an organization. So we talked about customers and our community as an important set of stakeholders, but there was another stakeholder group that was equally important, and that was the employees that are actually building CockroachDB. 
people join companies in many cases because of their mission, because of their values. And some of our earliest employees were also early contributors to our open source project. And so similar to our customers, I wanted to understand what were their motivation, what were their goals, and partner with them to form a brain trust to help us think through the challenges and the problems ahead. How can we build a project and get the funding we need to continue to invest in CockroachDB while also making sure that we can protect our business? And with those three steps, looking at this from the PM lens, creating the design partnerships with our customers and creating those partnerships with our community and creating that brain trust with the internal employees, that created the support, that created the comfort. It helped us understand what the risks were in making those changes and it gave us the confidence to push forward. We ultimately relicensed at CockroachDB. We got the additional protection from the cloud providers and we were able to move forward while still winning those major accounts and keeping our community, which has only um, grown since then. So that was the first case study. We saw a major change in the market. We knew the right direction that we wanted to go in, and then we applied the PM lens to actually make forward progress. We saw a strategy, an execution, but most importantly, how we decided to act, how we built in a bias towards action that helped us move the business forward. Let's move to the second case study. This is all about product channel fit. I've talked about developers a lot. Why are they so important to Cockroach Labs? At the end of the day, by getting the support of developers, we can speed up sales. Because there's, there's two ways for us to sell our product. We can go in through the chief technology officer or the chief architect, pitch the value of the product, and then try to find projects and ultimately lobby developers to actually use uh, CockroachDB to um, support these projects or we can create this groundswell of support by building the awareness broadly, have developers independently realize that CockroachDB is the best fit for their organization, and then have those developers and their managers reach out to us when they're ready to start a commercial conversation. That is a much more efficient way to sell, and that is why we spend so much time focusing on uh, developers. But something has changed since Cockroach Labs was first founded and since CockroachDB was an open source project. And that is a fundamental change or shift in developers' expectations for how they use databases. At the time, the only way you could use CockroachDB was by downloading the binary and running it yourself. That was fine in 2015. That was not fine in 2020. Developers want to build applications as quickly as possible. They don't want to worry about infrastructure. They want to move all of the management complexity and the operational complexity to the vendors so they can just build their apps or build their solutions as fast as possible. And we were falling behind here, and that was an existential risk to our business. We had a product that developers wanted, but we weren't delivering it in a way that developers loved. We didn't have product channel fit, and we had to do something about it. So again, that brought us to another big decision. We could do nothing, continue to focus all of our resources on the core product, and just have some partners handle the last mile integration. And the other option was to double down and run the product ourselves. This meant more opportunities to dog food, the ability to use data to refine the product and improve the, the product quickly. And it also meant that we wouldn't get disintermediated from our customers when, you know, if third parties ended up hosting CockroachDB. So we could vertically integrate and ultimately remove all barriers between developers and our value proposition. We felt that this was very much the right way to go. But again, there were forces that threatened action. There was a big gap between what we knew to be the right strategic decision and what it was going to take to build up that organizational will to move forward. And so the thing that gave us the most trouble was the knowledge that we were going to have to build a whole new set of capabilities to run a database. We have to get expertise around security and certification so customers would trust us with their most sensitive data. We didn't have that capability in-house. We'd have to get great at running large CockroachDB clusters. That's a whole discipline around site reliability engineering. We didn't have that capability in-house. And again, 
we had a roadmap that we were working against. We had some uh, problems that we wanted to solve. And this could be viewed as a distraction. So there was a lot of force to just say, hey, let's continue to refine the product. Let's wait another year. Let's wait another uh, two years. But ultimately, we would have missed the boat. And so let's talk about how we moved through that. So first, this was another opportunity to recognize that we had knowledge of the, the right thing to do, but we didn't have the organizational will to move forward. And understanding systematically what was preventing us from doing it, what were the, the core reasons or the core problems that we needed to solve, what were the risks that we needed to de-risk in order to make the organization comfortable going forward. So I did two things here. You can think of this as a carrot and a stick approach. The first was all about explaining what the world could look like if we vertically integrated, if we managed the, the database ourselves. The same way you would do a kickoff for an epic or a kickoff for a new uh, experiment or product, you can kick off uh, a process change. You can kick off uh, a change in strategy. The second thing I did was to create a sense of urgency by showing that, hey, this market is fundamentally shifting, by showing all the places where we are increasingly losing out to developers because they want something that is fully managed, even if it isn't as fully featured. So we launched Cockroach Cloud and it has been tremendous for our business. And let us translate our open source go-to-market into a product-led growth one, which gave us a very efficient way to make our customers successful, but also a very efficient way to sell. And again, we knew the right thing to do. The question was, how can we get the organization to act? So just to wrap up, I wanna talk about three lessons learned. First is that there's a lot of product literature around strategy and how to formulate one and how to think about building a competitive advantage. That's very important, but writing a strategy and coming up with a strategy doesn't make it so. That is just the first step. Second is that there's a big difference between strategy and execution, and it's that space in between. It's that decision or that commitment to act that need to be taken just as seriously as coming up with the strategy itself. Because strategy changes or putting a strategy in place in the first place is inherently an organizational change. This is a behavioral change. And by design, there will be a ton of organizational resistance that you as a product leader can play a major role in overcoming. The last thing is that the product management skill set is so powerful because yes, it can help you solve customer problems, but if you point those PM skills internally and you apply those internally, you can solve some of the biggest change management problems that threaten the success of your organization. As a product leader, it gives you an opportunity to rise above your title and really start to act like a CEO and have an outsized impact on the ultimate growth and success of your organizations. I wanna thank you so much for listening to this talk.